Okay, now we want to talk about different kinds of textures that metamorphic rocks can have. And there are two kinds of textures, either foliated or non-foliated. So in a foliated texture, the minerals are going to reorient themselves so that they tend to form flat planes. So that in the first picture, you can see that some of the minerals are like this, some are like this, and some are like this. And so they have different kinds of orientations. Now we're going to subject it to pressure. And you can see now that those minerals are now lined up like this. So this is going to be called foliation when the minerals reorient themselves and to accommodate the pressure that's being applied to them. So sometimes you can, the, the, these minerals are so small that you cannot see the individual minerals that are lined up. So for example, under very low uh, conditions of metamorphism, um, this is going to be called a low-grade metamorphism, you have slate. And so if you were to look at a sample of slate, you would not be able to see the individual minerals that are lined up like this. However, you would notice that they have done it because slate has kind of a, uh, it looks kind of like this, and it makes these flat, blocky structure like that. And the reason why it's flat and blocky like that is because of the, the microscopic crystals that have oriented themselves. So inside of this thing, you've got all of these different crystals that have oriented themselves flat like that. And so the overall look of the rock is going to be flat as a result of it. Okay, then if you increase the amount of heat uh, and pressure that's being applied to slate, it will turn into phyllite. And so now, when you look at the metamorphic rock phyllite, you will start to notice the individual minerals and how they are lining up. Okay, then the next thing is, if you continue to heat it and add pressure to it, it then metamorphosizes from phyllite uh, into schist. And now the crystals are really starting to become apparent in the rock. And then if you continue to heat it up, so this is going to be considered a, a high-grade metamorphic rock, extreme heat and pressure, uh, the minerals are going to start to uh, migrate, and they're going to start to form bands, and then you end up with a gneiss in there. Now, if you continue to heat it up even further, then you end up with something that is not quite a metamorphic rock, and it's not quite an igneous rock. So an igneous rock would be if the whole thing was to completely melt. Uh, and in a metamorphic rock, none of it melts. So in a migmatite, part of the metamorphic rock starts to melt and starts to flow. So that would be an extreme case of metamorphism where you end up with the bigmatite. Now you can also have metamorphic rocks that do not have foliation. And so that's going to be called a non-foliated texture or it's going to be called uh, granoblastic. And an example of this would be marble. So you take limestone which has calcium carbonate in it, and then you subject it just to heat, and so what you end up with is still calcium carbonate, but it has reorganized those crystals into something that is more compact. And But you do not notice that the crystals have any particular orientation. So that's going to be called a non-foliated texture. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we're going to look at a classification chart for metamorphic rocks.